there are many instances where one needs to draw an arc of a circle. If the circle is, has a small radius, you can use just a regular compass. Or if it's, say, a couple feet, you can use a bar compass. Then if it's maybe uh, five, six, ten feet or something like that, the guy can uh, use a string and rotate it around the, the central, uh, and say, a nail driven in the center of a circle, and you get arcs that are a little flatter. But what if you need an arc that has a radius of maybe, say, a 200 feet. Well, what are some real world examples? Well, let's say we we're going to pour a sidewalk. We had our forms in and uh, we put our cement in and then we wanted to uh, scree this with a scree board that had just a slight uh, convex uh, curve to it so that the rain would run off the driveway. Maybe we want uh, one quarter inch uh, curvature in, in uh, say an eight foot uh, driveway. The radius of this arc might be several hundred feet long. We'll show how to calculate that later. Another example would be uh, maybe uh, uh, a boat. You want to put a, uh, a cross beam in a boat on the deck and you want to have maybe a half inch positive camber in the deck so that the rain will run off your deck. There are several examples. All of these were the arc that you need for either the pattern or the actual product could be uh, hundreds of feet long. There's other cases where the center of the arc is inaccessible. Say you had a, a shed here and you wanted to put some kind of curbing in maybe and uh, you, there's no way of draw, actually drawing the arc even if it was uh, reasonably short. You couldn't draw the arc because the building's in the way. For these long radius arcs, a long compass is the tool of choice. To demonstrate its construction in use, let's uh, imagine we're going to build a cross beam for a say a four foot dock and we're going to put a half inch camber at the center so the rain will run off the the dock. The first thing we'll do is draw a line parallel to the edge of the timber offset by the camber, in this case a half inch for the full length of the timber. And then we'll drive nails in at the uh, edge at the center and then on the line two feet out in our case. So I've got a <clears throat> nail driven in in the center on the edge and then one nail at, at the uh, end of the timber that's offset down a half inch. So our object now will be to draw an arc connecting those three points. To build the long compass we'll need two pieces of lath that are straight on their edge and they have to be in length equal to half the beam in our case that's two feet. These two laths are then secured at the center in a some kind of a swivel fashion. I've made one using a screw and then a, a half lap affair here. The important thing is that there's no uh, slack in this joint and that is strong enough so that when we use the compass it doesn't fall apart. To show up better on the video I've replaced the board with a, a piece of scrap plywood to simulate making this arc. I've redrawn the line half inch offset. Now we're ready to take our long compass and get it in the right position for this particular arc. Place the long compass on our offset line and then we're going to bend it with the center centered with the uh, center nail. And we're going to bend it until the offset is one half the camber. So in our case, the camber is half inch. So we're going to offset so that the uh, long compass shows a quarter inch. And that's right there. And now we'll get that firm in place by putting a brace on. On these low angles like this, I like to use a, a glue gun and put a, a third member across the joint. 
if we're going to use the outside we want to make sure our brace is not interfering with the outside surface if we're going to use the inside then we'll make sure that it's uh, clear on the inside we'll use the outside in this case so double check it's quarter inch centered and then we'll glue it in place I've made a little notch in the long compass to hold the uh, pen in place. And we'll put this outside edge up against two of the nails. Sometimes the compass is so long that it, the uh, third nail interferes with the travel of the compass. So, so uh, I'll take the right nail out temporarily for now and we'll draw the, this half of the arc. I'll use a marking pen so that we can see it better. Put the uh, pen in the notch, and then I'll just slide the compass along, keeping it up against the two nails. There. Now we can do the same on the other side. Take this nail out and place that nail in place. And there we have it, our half inch camber arc. The long compass works as long as the camber is less than or equal to 10% of the half width of the, of the arc. Uh, I've created another example here. We'll work with a simulated three foot beam and we'll offset it uh, inch and three quarters. That's about 10%. So then our, since the camber is inch and uh, three quarters the offset for the long compass will be half that or seven eighths. We'll get it centered like this and now I'll glue it in position. First, the long compass is completely scalable. If you wanted to draw an arc that was 20 feet long, you just have to use longer lath, maybe two by fours. If the ratio of the half width to the camber increases beyond 10%, the compass is still uh, useful and can be used accurately, but the offset no longer is calculated as half of the, of the camber but instead has to be done with formulas. We'll get into why that is and why the long compass works at all at the drafting table. And we'll also get into uh, a method, another method altogether of, of just calculating the offsets.